Phil the Dusk, we've got Floyd the Turtle. Uh, these are friends that you meet regularly at the pond. They are, they are. And they kind of represent, uh, each character represents different ages. Uh, and they all have little, little problems here and there. They do, little they do, they do. Methuselah and the alligator has fewer problems than the rest, but he's oh. trying to help them solve their problems. <laughs> you lived so long, you gained a lot of wisdom. Is that how it works? Yes, it is. Methuselah. Oh. There you go. I thought that. Wow. I caught that. You should be in this business, Cheryl. <laughs> 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 you, you, were, you and I were in this business years ago, but that's another story. Children's programming. Yes. We are so for this. Mm -hmm. Where did the pond come from? Well, you know, at, at first I wanted to do, to be honest with you, chickens. But at the time, Chicken Run had come out. Oh. And I thought, well, there's going to be Chicken Run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's, it's, it's too good. They're just going to keep doing it. So and I thought, they didn't. No, they didn't. <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> They're in Chicken Run now. Yeah, I know. So I, I thought, well, I want, to, I, want, I want to create characters that can represent different ages, um, uh, different types of characters. So I thought, where can I do that? Where can I find this? And, and I thought, well, a pond. I can mm -hmm. put any, just find any kind of creature I wanted in there. And eventually, I can go underwater and pick up some more creatures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's neat. So, Charlie, are, are these videos for people, you know, of faith, or can people of any, you know, if somebody isn't a Christian, can they, can they enjoy this with their kids just as much? That's one of my main goals. That's great. Yeah. I wanted it to be something, and it's the same thing that was happening when I was talking about mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, what what they did with uh, the last senator, uh, creating something that not only is entertaining and well done but that you can hand to your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And I wanted something that um, kids can enjoy, parents can enjoy, which is, to me, it's very important to not just just dumb down everything. There's some big mm -hmm. words in here. Yeah. There are some big words. And <laughs> sometimes good. they're defined. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Well, sometimes. Claustrophobic. Yeah. Yes. So, you're saying, claustrophobic. Yeah, so you're saying the whole, the, the, the videos are for parents, kids, and of all different walks of life and different journeys of faith. They are now. Mm -hmm. It's it, it, there is there is a specific scripture reference in in, in each. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's very important. But at the same time, uh, it's not hitting you over head over the head. Mm -hmm. And I do want it to be something like I said that you can give to a, a non Christian ch child for their birthday mm -hmm. right. that they can take into the home and hopefully that can open up some discussion. Right. Well, you know what I think yeah. is another great idea. If if you're watching the show and maybe you don't have children, buy this and then give it to your public library. <laughs> because so many people now get videos out of the library and, and kids watch videos much more, I think, than they watch TV, mm -hmm. which is great, because then you're at least yeah. choosing what your kids are watching. This is a little sign <laughs> I've kept by our television for so long, and I'm sure it's been entirely ignored. Give your television set a break, turn it off, and read a book. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. when we have material like this, we can actually be enthusiastic about seeing our children sitting glued to the screen as they are wont to be. Mm -hmm. Right, and they're a half hour, so it's not a full two hours where they're glued a little longer than you may want them to be. They can still get some yeah. exercise they in could. a little right. bit. Or talk outside. to someone. The, ex the exercise might be going to get the video, next video, but <laughs> some exercise. But I, th I think what we really want to tell parents today is just be careful about what your kids watch. Like, think about it. Buy the DVDs, you know, get the videos. Don't necessarily just turn on the television because what's on TV, what's on video games especially, and a lot of us don't know what's on video games. Yeah. You know, these are scary, and we don't want these and images so in our research, kids' heads. Do it beforehand yeah. and, and be informed, I think, is so important for parents. And you know, just yeah. in August. the whole media thing, I was just going to say, my, I discovered recently that my husband checks what my son has downloaded onto his mm. iPod. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't recognize it, he can go in and actually look at the words. And sometimes they have a little sit down session mm -hmm. and say, now Davey, look what this song, because sometimes I don't think they really yeah, listen to all the really words. Listen, no. No. But we know that these messages are having an impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I just wanted to add to, you know, Sorry, I don't sure. think a lot of parents realize, but studies have found that kids between two and seven, if they see a, a monster and you say that's not real, they can't actually differentiate that that's not real. They can't mm -hmm. tell between reality that's and right. fantasy. Mm -hmm. So up to seven years old, which is pretty old if you think about it, these things are appearing real to kids. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important, like you said, for parents to really be careful what yeah. their kids watch and mm -hmm. find a way to control it, I and guess. And this is what you're saying. I was just reading in, the, in our information that was given to us about the developmental stages of kids. I mean, before two, they've been saying that, you know, kids shouldn't even be watching yeah, their TV no before two. TV. <laughs> but then when, you know, like you said, two to seven, these are, you know, important stages where the brain is developing, where they're getting their information and values and all kinds of things. And so that's why it's so important with things like the pond 
for kids. It, it, it is, especially because it, people people sometimes uh, forget or don't realize that that their kids are picking up this stuff, and it is during a, a critical developmental stage. And a lot of times, these these people who are putting together these shows. Now, another frustration I had was I was meeting a lot with the folks who were writing the shows, because after a while they got, well, Charlie's not giving us any ideas that we're going to use. Let's mm -hmm. put them in touch with some of these people who are doing it, and then we'll bring them back in. So I met with these people. Many of them didn't, did not have kids. And par probably oh. the biggest frustration I had was some of these guys think it's very funny to put things in these shows that their friends will giggle at, that they can get away with. Yeah. Right. And, that, and that just made me angry. Yeah. Now, not all of them. I, sh I think it's important to note, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't beat any of these people, but I'm sure there's people <laughs> out there who are trying to do it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But a lot so, aren't, so be careful. <laughs> Charlie, where can we get all the adventures at the pond? Well, they're uh, for sale in Christian bookstores or uh, online at lifeatthepond.com. We are Life thankful you're pond. doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. God bless you. You know, childhood is no longer a protected stage of life development. The barriers that separated children from the world of adults have eroded. We're in a social storm where several forces are impacting the, the nature of childhood, robbing our kids of innocence and imagination, as Cheryl said. The media and the, the whole technological revolution with the internet world and all of its scary prospects for our children. Uh, that's just part of it. I, I feel as if I'm constantly plugging something in or recharging something from your, your phone to the computer. It's just like this all the time and in the process feeling more disconnected with the people I love. Aggressive consumerism has little girls wanting to dress like Britney Spears or become America's next top model. Our, our guest coordinator said she saw a little nine-year-old with the t-shirt, I'm America's next top model. And, and then we have fragmented families. Uh, we're just engulfed in this perfect storm. Our society's focus on leisure and entertainment has led to an explosion of entertainment op options. Years ago, Elizabeth Elliot wrote a book with a condemning title, Amusing Ourselves to Death. Think about that one. Well, on the way to work today, I read a hopeful challenge on a church marquee. Every home is a school. What do you teach? Well, may I share a little encouragement from the Word of God? This is Ephesians chapter 5. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. I just think of uh, uh, one network running an all day long CSI after CSI, reenactments of brutal murders after reenactments. Uh, be careful, be very careful, verse 15 says, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Parents, there just is no substitute for being in touch and involved in your child's life. We're here too, and we want to help and encourage you.